Hello and welcome to the uh, virtual post -op or visit day talk um, for Cardiff School of Earth and Ocean Sciences. My name is Dr. Andrew Kerr and I'm Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the school. So the broad subject areas that the school covers are given in the slide here. Um, range from landscapes, earth history, mineral deposits, um, fossils, volcanoes, soils and plants, geomorphology, and even our own evolution. <coughs> Nearly everything you see um, and do around you is affected by geography and geology, where towns are located, scenery, coasts, land use, um, where we build various structures, um, and it's often said that it's not a hobby for life, it's more the reason for life. So to, what best gives an overview of what the school does in terms of research is the research areas um, that the staff um, do research into. Um, and these involve such things as when plants colonise the land, how the earth mantle works, geomorphology, rivers, um, meanders of rivers in particular, uh, water resources, um, economic geology, how we find minerals and exploit them uh, sustainably, um, marine geology, um, coastal processes and management of those processes, uh, a whole range of things, global climate change, so much more um, as well. You can find it more about that on our website. So what type of subject background do, do we expect? Well, ideally all the A-levels are listed on the page here. Um, we know that uh, everybody's not going to have these. So what we would like to see is a, is a, a good mix of subjects, some uh, science, perhaps geography, although geography or geology is certainly not compulsory. But we'd like to have a little bit of uh, evidence. So a good maths background is a, a good idea as well as is, you know, um, physics, chemistry, any of the subjects listed here uh, will serve you well. So what was our intake like this past year? Uh, this gives you a flavour of what our intake will be like this coming year. So we took in 190 students, um, and the numbers are, are listed here, you can, you can uh, see them. Um, and about 20 of these students are on our MSI four-year course. And most of two or three science A levels, although some of uh, just uh, one science uh, A level. Um, and the most common uh, subject is geography, which we count as a science. The next most common subject that people have is biology. So, where are our students from? Well, this map shows um, where the students uh, uh, last year's intake um, comes from. Um, and you see it's mostly the, the southern part of the uh, of, of the country. Um, we do get occasional people from Northern Ireland and from uh, Scotland, but <clears throat> it's mostly um, from the southern part of the country. So what we're looking for for this year's uh, entry in October 2020, and incidentally, some people pointed out to me that on the UCAS website, it tells you that the start date for Cardiff University um, is the 1st of September. That is a mistake and I'm going to, have to try and get it corrected. The start date's um, currently going to be uh, with the third week in September uh, in line with other UK universities. So anyway, our um, entry will be about 175, 180 um, across all our degree programmes. Um, people have standard offers depending on which programmes you applied for. Um, we're expanding our geography numbers into physical geography and many of you that are listening and viewing this will have applied for physical geography, but we're also completely revamping all our degree programmes and we've been heavily involved in that over the last um, few months. So at the minute we've got six different degree programmes, um, BSc degree programmes, these run for three years, exploration geology, which is all to do with extraction uh, of minerals and energy, strong industrial links with that. Then pure geology degree, which is with field mapping, um, paleontology, igneous rocks, volcanoes, really interested in volcanoes. 
this is what um, the degree that you should uh, have applied for. Um, environmental geoscience, basically applied geology of the Earth's surface and includes things like water resources, engineering geology and global change. And then our new degree in physical geography, which is really an essentially a degree in geomorphology, um, water, things like this. Really, it's a non-human aspects of geography. Whereas environmental geography is more about, um, includes geomorphology, rivers, landscape management, um, but more about the influence of the humans have on this, um, on, on the geographical world, um, and less about the physical processes. And then we've got marine geography, which is physical and human geography encompassing uh, the coasts, the oceans, um, and particularly surveying and management of the coasts and the oceans. We also offer four-year BSc programmes with professional placements. And at the minute we have these in environmental geoscience, exploration geology and marine geography. Um, but these will be available to all programmes from uh, 2020. So the subject availability, we can, we um, we're some we're dependent on companies and organisations to offer these placements. Um, so that's sort of what determines how many of them we uh, we have to give out. Um, so students spend a year working in industry, after years two and three, and they may be placed with a port, um, harbour authority, or surveying or, or mining company, something like that. And here's a couple of examples of people who've gone out and passed placements. Um, James, who worked in Platinum Mine uh, in Australia, and Joanna, who went on a, uh, to work on marine ecology in northern Spain. And this is an example of where the um, exploration and resource geology, um, or exploration geology, as it's now called, uh, where those students went in their placements since um, 2004, and you can see there's a wide range of uh, places worldwide where the students have went to. And then we offer four-year uh, MSI courses, um, and it's important to make the point at, at, at this time, at this point, that there's in the UK there's two different types of uh, master's courses. There are master's courses. Um, traditional master's courses, MSCs, which are uh, after, you, so you do a BSc and then you do a separate uh, specialist master's course. Um, and then there are four-year uh, undergraduate master's courses, and this is what these are. And so these are basically a four-year undergraduate degree. And the fourth year is devoted to advanced science and research. Uh, and you've got a big six-month project in there as well, which accounts for uh, half your uh, mark in the final year. And it builds in the BSc programme. And it's ideal for people who want to go on and uh, specialise in aspects of research, either in academia or indeed for a company. And it helps you to fine tune, tune um, key skills of things like project planning, critical analysis, which companies um, really want these days. So you can do it in MS and uh, M-size in all our degree programs. So the offers we make and the offers that you've been given um, are realistic offers. We like to make realistic offers to students because we know that there's many factors that influence your school uh, performance and results, and um, probably this year in more so than most. Um, how you engage with your university programme is going to be far more important in determining your degree outcome rather than what you got in your um, A-levels. And just a point, you're very likely to go to your first choice university. Few, very few students need their insurance, and this is probably the, uh, going to be even more so the case this year. Um, so the whole university has undergone quite radical change in the last five years. It's a major investment programme in teaching facilities building and uh, education innovation and um, in research. And Cardiff University ranked very highly in the uh, research um, uh, exercise, government exercise that was uh, from a few years ago. Um, and the school itself did very well as well in terms of our research output. We ranked fourth in the UK 
in our subject area. And part of the, the developments happening in the university opposite the um, our building, and this is uh, our building here, if you can see it highlighted on my screen here, is this building, which is an artist's impression of this building. It's currently being uh, built. It's due to be completed in 2021, and it's a student life centre. So this building will have a big lecture theatre, um, all sorts of facilities for uh, students, things like student support, uh, career support, um, finances, all aspects of, of uh, student-facing activities um, that are non-academic um, as may be in this uh, big new building that's been opened or been built. So the National Student Survey is a survey run every year by um, government agency to, de to determine how satisfied students are with their degree programmes. And last year, Earth degree programmes did very well. Um, a satisfaction rating of 95.2, which was the fourth highest in the in the university. And the courses that were above us were things like um, optometry and Welsh, so quite specialised courses that people know what they're going to do. So of the regular um, courses in the university, uh, we did very well. Um, and three programmes actually had 100% satisfaction rating from last year's graduating cohort. But we're not satisfied with that. We're improving things for 2020, um, increasing the weight of uh, weighting of fieldwork and the final year projects. Um, we'll reduce the amount of assessment. So you've got to have fewer items of assessment. Um, that allows you to have more time for thought and, um, and doing uh, scholarship. Um, but add some optionality to the second year, which previously there wasn't. Um, we're making modules larger, and they're all going to be 20 credits. So you do 120 credits a year. So you used to be a lot of 10 credit modules to make up your 120 credits, but now they're all 20 credits or larger. Um, and this enables more staff to contribute to modules within a block of teaching. All the new Earth Science programmes have been re-accredited by the Geological Society of London. <clears throat> and we're in the process of getting the geographical um, su subjects uh, accredited as well. So many points to consider when you're thinking about um, what course you're going to um, do. Um, our first semester or first term um, is common across the, the, the school. Um, doesn't require A-level geology. Um, so it does mean you can change degree programme within the first year. Um, and 15 students changed uh, last year. So the key thing is you don't have to finally choose which degree programme you're going to end up doing um, until the Christmas of the, your first year. So you can come in, for instance, on um, physical geography and decide that um, you, know, uh, you want to do um, Geology, because you're really interested in volcanoes. I had a tutee this year that uh, changed from uh, environmental geography to geology because she was so interested in volcanoes. So you can do that because everybody does the same first semester. Um, you can also upgrade to an MSI um, at some point uh, as well. Um, it doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't have to be in the first year. Um, you can transfer to the uh, four year degree at any time um, up to the the Easter in your third year, um, provided you get, I think, over 60% uh, is what it currently is. And most programmes have optionality in years two, three, and four. So you can choose modules. So, so as I said, you take 120 credits a year. Most modules are 20 credits, 40 credits for dissertations and some field work. Most modules have continuous assessment, so there's less pressure in examinations, and modules are mostly 70% exam, 30% coursework. Sometimes it's 50-50 if it's a practical heavy topic. And you've got tutorials, which are timetable to help you. Um, all our lectures are videoed like this one, and um, PowerPoints are online in advance, and some lectures will give out quite detailed handout notes as well. Um, year one students, all of uh, 
student mentors in the uh, in the second year who they can go to and they meet with them occasionally um, to talk about um, and get advice from them. And we value dignity and diversity, as you can see there. Um, field work and practical work allow you to get lots of practical experience um, in your specialist area, and you get a wide range of transferable skills. Probably in a geography or geology degree, uh, regardless of where you do it, you'll end up with a wider range of transferable skills than any other degree that you could do. Um, and this is invaluable in later careers, um, whichever uh, part of the um, business or economy you end up in. So contact hours. People always ask about contact hours. During residential fieldwork, contact hours are obviously all day. Um, but generally, face-to-face -face contact um, during the normal um, term time is about 15 hours a week. You'd be in a lecture theatre, tutorial, or uh, laboratory, uh, laboratory setting. Um, and the rest of the time, students are expected to uh, study uh, a lot of material, do coursework in their own time. So here's some typical um, contact hours. One for year, for year one geology. So for your year one geologist, this is typically what you would have midterm. Um, so seven lectures a week, eight hours of practical classes, and usually a day in the field. And year two, environmental geography. Um, as another example, you would have uh, an average seven lectures a week, two hours of practical classes, maybe a couple of hours seminar on dissertation topics, and again, a day in the field. So, Here's a little bit more information about our degree programmes. Um, I'm not going to sit and stand and, uh, and read these out to you. Um, you know, you can pause the video and you can read them uh, yourself. But the key point is listed at the bottom. Um, there's shared modules in years uh, one and two. These provide core knowledge and a very efficient way for us to uh, teach. You know the great number of um, different degree programs that we offer. And then you've got more scheme defining modules in years two, three, and four. And you've also got some optionality, as I said, in years two, three, and four. And then you've got the geographical uh, subjects. And you can see highlighted here the, the main differences between environmental geography, marine geography, and physical geography. And again, shared modules in years one and two. and um, scheme defining modules in the later years. So before Christmas in year one, as I said, it's common. Everybody does the same set of modules. Um, so if you've got two or three different choices uh, on your UCAS application from Cardiff, you uh, in our school you only need to retain one of them. Um, you don't have to um, retain two of them, because it doesn't matter what you come in on, you can transfer. Um, so after Christmas, there's some common material across the, all the degree programmes, but there, as you'll see in a few slides, there is more um, divergence between the different uh, degree programmes. Um, in the first year, you get exams in January and May and recess in August. So as I said, we have no geographical, geological knowledge. Um, common fieldwork objectives across all our schemes, um, you know, that involves measuring things, recording and reporting. There's day excursions on land and some ones uh, sometimes at sea as well. There's also a week-long residential course uh, around the Easter vacation. Um, and it goes to different places depending on which to degree programme you're on. So this is what a uh, breakdown summary of the modules in year one uh, looks like. And if you can see these set of modules, you can see all the, the, the solid colours here. These are the modules which you'll do in semester one. Um, so it's, it's as if everybody does the same first semester. Um, and then after uh, January, uh, for the in the first year, you uh, basically choose what half of the school you're on. Are you on the earth science half, 
Are you going to go and do either geology, exploration geology, or environmental geoscience, or are you going to do one of the geographies that we offer? And what you can see from this is that you make what decision of what half the school you're on by Christmas, and then that's not your final choice. You can uh, obviously you can stay on what the course you've signed up for to begin with, but um, come the end of the first year, you can change within each half of the school. So say you were on the geology and you thought, oh, I fancy uh, doing an exploration geology, uh, I fancy painting about you know, working in the exploration industry. You can change at the end of the first year because if you see um, geology, exploration geology, and environmental geoscience do the same range of modules, identical modules in the, the second year or in, in the second term. And the same is true for the geographies. All the geographies do the same uh, modules in the, the second term of the first year. So you can change at the end of the first year between uh, either environmental geography, marine geography, or physical geography. So if you like, there are two dividings of the ways um, at the end of the first semester and at the end of the first year. Um, by the end of the first year, you decide um, finally which degree you are going to um, end up studying for years two, three, and possibly four. So in your second year, you've already said you've decided on your degree program and what topics you've got to pursue, what you've got to drop. Um, there's a different selection of modules, there are four for each program. There's different, different degree uh, courses for each program, and we'll talk about these um, briefly in a minute or two. And also, you see the separate fieldwork presentations. And fieldwork, as, as well as being present within a fieldwork module, it's also present in some specific modules, day trips and things like that. And there's also the possibility of studying abroad. <clears throat> European exchange. So this is what year two looks like. The immediate thing you notice is the quite a big difference between um, the uh, geography and geology sides. Um, you can see the, the range of, of modules here and you can find out more about these modules on uh, Cardiff University's course finder. So I should say that the Ones like this are the solid colours are the core modules, these are compulsory modules, and then the optional modules are shown in the cross-hatched um, uh, ornament here. So there's not much more to say about that. You can pause the video and look at these in more detail. So in your third year, there's more specialisations. Some modules are compulsory, some you can choose, some modules you can choose, and there's some modules if it, it's not offered to your degree program, unfortunately, you can't do so. It pays to plan ahead to look at what um, modules will be available uh, if you if you choose a particular um, degree program. Um, so you also do a project work that have been mapping, um, some kind of dissertation, industrial placement, and you do the work for that over the summer, and it represents 33% of the year's marks. And in the th uh, uh, third year, there's also optional extra field work you can do, an optional residential course. And there's advanced topics and a variety of different subjects. And you choose what you want to do based on your interests in these optional modules. And you can see the range of optional modules here. A lot more of these cross hatched um, uh, modules indicating that they're uh, optional modules. So what do MSI students do in year four? Well, they've got a master's research project, which is a big project, it's worth half a year, so 60 credits out of the 120. It's a year long project um, within one of the research groups in the school. They also do a field trip, um, which is worth 20 credits to, uh, and currently this goes to Almeria uh, in Spain. And further optionals. Uh, modules and you can see the breakdown of the um, year here. Um, so they do the um, project, 60 credits and 20 credit field course and then you get three modules to choose from either uh, on research, current research and range of fields, business and the environment and uh, 
modeling um, in earth and environmental sciences. So you choose two of those to make up your 120 credits. So how, you, how is your degree calculated? Well, depending on whether you're doing a BSc or BSc with placement or an MSI, you can see the breakdown here. And um, generally, as you go through, higher weighting is given to the, uh, the more advanced years. Three quarters of our students uh, in recent years have either gained a first class uh, degree or a 2 1 degree. So our students tend to do very well when they come to us. So there are scholarships available uh, through the university. Uh, you make a card of your firm choice by the 30th of June 2020 and you get three A levels, um, you get three A's in A levels or 35 IB points. You'll get £3,000 over the course of your degree. And how this is going to be affected by what's going to happen at A levels, exams don't. Well, exams aren't happening. Well, how, that, how this is affected, I don't know. This will be up to the university to decide. Um, but this is um, what we've been told at the minute. Um, so these are based on merit. They're not based on household income. And the university website's got more information. And there's also information on there uh, about bursaries for students from lower income families and things like that. But it's on the website that's given there. So fieldwork's essential, and there'll be another presentation. Uh, there's, well, in fact, there's two. There's one on the geography fieldwork, and there's one on the earth science fieldwork. But I'm just just going to give you an overview here um, of these. So um, South Wales is an excellent location for doing uh, both geological and geographical um, fieldwork, um, and all our fieldwork is designed to satisfy uh, accreditation requirements, both of the geological society and of the uh, organisations who accredit our geography degrees. Fieldwork training is vital. Um, we've got the Glamorgan Heritage Coast on our doorstep um, and uh, it's a great natural laboratory uh, both for geologists and for geographers. We go on overseas trips as well uh, as you'll see in the separate fieldwork talk. It's an example of some of our students uh, on a recent Alps uh, trip. These are the environmental geographers. And here's some more examples um, of our students on, uh, on various aspects of their uh, fieldwork. The coast is very important, both from a geological point of view, so we get lots of exposures, but it's also uh, important to a lot of our de uh, degrees, particularly the marine geographers, um, for a lot of their uh, fieldwork and their research as well. So you know, out in the field, soils and plants, underwater ecology, reading the rock record, a uh, wide range of field work. So this is currently where we go on our field work. I should say that compulsory field trip costs, because field trips in years one and two are compulsory. And these are covered by tuition fees. There's no student uh, contribution apart from food um, and if it's not self-catering. Uh, because the university takes the view that uh, you'd have to eat wherever you are. But it's a relatively small student contribution to uh, towards food. Um, year three trips are optional, um, so they're not considered a part, uh, you know, an, a vital part of your degree, uh, so they may occur an additional cost. Currently, year one, these are residential field trips, currently year one goes to Pembrokeshire or Snowdonia, uh, depending on whether you're um, an earth scientist uh, geologists go to Pembrokeshire and the, uh, most of the geographers go to Snowdonia, but the marine geographers go to Pembrokeshire as well. And then in year two, the geology exploration students go to Dorset, Arran, Cornwall, and Spain, and year three they go to Cyprus. And environmental geoscience, environmental geography go to um, Portugal, the Netherlands, South Wales, and then in year three, Tenerife or the Alps. And the marine geographers currently go to Jersey and Malta in year two and Greece in um, year three. And the uh, physical geographers, we go into some of these places as well. Um, and in year two, location varies, but it's usually southern, uh, year four rather, location varies, but it's usually southern Spain. We've got our own boat, um, which is um, moored down in uh, Cardiff Bay. It's called the Guiding Light. Um, so it's plenty of opportunity to do offshore work locally uh, around South Wales, surveying 
and it's mostly the marine geography degree that um, utilizes the boat. So what to consider when you're thinking about which degree you're going to go for? Subject matter, what are the topics covered? Is there a one particular topic you're really interested in? Um, you like to want to know more about it? If there is, a piece of advice I would give you is to go on to uh, you know, any, any university, any degree program you're applying for, if there's a particular uh, area that you're interested in, go onto the website and have a look uh, if there's a member of staff doing research into that field. Because if there's not, the chances are there won't be a third year module in that topic. That's just a piece of good advice I always give to um, students. So how much choice will I get? You know, how many uh, modules are there to choose from? What are the class sizes? Are you good at continuous assessment or do you prefer exams? What are you like with deadlines? Some people are good, some people aren't very good. Um, uh, what are the fieldwork options? Do you like it in cold and wet? Because in one of our degrees, in most geography and geology degrees, you will get cold and wet at some point. You'll also get quite warm and, and feel quite nice uh, in fieldwork, but you might also get warm and wet, uh, cold and wet rather. The year in industry, transferable skills, very important. Um, and you get a wide range of transferable skills. Are the degrees accredited? Are you looking for a, a career? Uh, where you'll use your degree subject, or are you happy with any job where you would use more of your transferable skills? Um, and do people get jobs afterwards? And on that theme, uh, employability, the latest Higher Education Statistics Agency figures for um, Cardiff University are unfortunately from 2016-17. More recent, they're very slow to release their data, and more recent data is not going to be available until August. But the most recent data we have is 2016-17, when it was found that 72% of our graduates uh, were they're engaged in studying or employment within six months of graduating. Um, but quite a lot of our students, um, this is, if, if the figures were within a year, I think you'd find a lot more of our students were in uh, um, employment or further study, because a lot of our students um, if they haven't taken a gap year uh, before they went to university, they take a gap year after uh, they, they, they graduate. So these are the types of careers that people um, end up in. Um, in more environmental uh, side of things, you can see range of degrees that people have gone into. Um, and then energy and utilities, the range of degrees, I'm not going to read these out. You can pause the video and read them for yourself. There's a wide range of uh, careers that people can end up in. So these are the ones that are you acquire subject knowledge for. There's also a wide range of careers that people have gone into um, that don't require uh, subject knowledge, but does require the, or the transferable skills that they've learned during their degree. So you know, in uh, finance and government um, and things like that. Your first degree may be enough, but some people want to pursue further training, and in which case you can go on and do one of these uh, separate master's courses, so three-year BSc and then an MSc, and these are available at most UK universities, and they're very specialised degrees, um, normally geared towards a very particular type of industry, and most um, MSCs and people do them, they increase their employability quite substantially. Um, you can see the range of topics you could do, uh, some of our uh, graduates in the past have um, gone to do MSCs and you also consider PGCEs, teacher training, or go on and do a PhD uh, for three or four years and do research. Here are some examples of uh, some of our graduates and what they what they say. Um, this is Adam Hughes, graduated a few years ago, um, did BSc in geology with us, and then did the MSc, or our MSc here, in applied environmental geology. And now he's an exploration geologist working in uh, Australia, working on coal mines. Um, and uh, you can read what uh, Adam said when he got back in touch with us, let us know how he was getting on. Um, a lot of our graduates end up in, in uh, particularly geologists and exploration geologists, end up uh, in Australia working in the exploration industry. And Sarah Fennick uh, is working on a gold mine 
um, with um, a small gold mining company um, in Western Australia. Um, and again, you can read um, what she said if I um, go back. This has jumped forward on me. Um, so you can read that. And then Hannah Hayward, who um, did a BSc in Environmental Geoscience, did the placement year, and she's working for a construction company, a BAM Construction. And again, you can read what she says. And then example of one of the marine geographers, James Wichelow. Um, he's working in the, ba the Bahamas. He did his placement there. Uh, and then got a, a job at this uh, biological field station um, after graduating. So he did his placement there and then got a job with them. He turned as assistant manager and now he's manager at this field station. And again, you can read what uh, he said. Then Sophie Crew, who is a development scientist at Wessex Water, and um, she's involved in a lot of monitoring and deciding on policy uh, related to um, how to implement uh, changes in legislation as regards the water industry. And again, you can read what she said about her time at Cardiff and what she's doing now. So other points to consider regarding Cardiff. It's a capital city. Um, you've been living here for three or four years. Um, so, you know, it's um, important to make the right decision. Do you like sport, opera, shopping, concerts? Uh, waterfront development, art galleries. Uh, Cardiff as a capital city has got all of these and much more. So to sum up, Earth and Ocean Sciences is a fantastic subject to study at university. The topics are highly relevant, uh, many transferable skills, as I said. His work is a great experience. Um, you'll probably find yourself uh, much closer to, um, in terms of friendships, to the um, people on your course uh, because you're simply away your way and feed work with them a lot um, uh, and in contact with them you know, for 24 hours um, rather than and if you were doing a different degree uh, where you may only see people in the old lecture or two. So um, field work is a great experience and above all the earth needs keen and enthusiastic young people, scientists to help sort out some of the problems that we can see on the horizon. Now, to finish off, I've got a couple of um, things for you. Um, and some of our younger staff, newly appointed staff, uh, were asked to um, compile this virtual uh, course um, over a couple of years ago. And it's running again, uh, and you can join it. And it's called Extreme Geological Events. But if you're a geographer, don't be put off by that because it's got lots of natural um, hazards in it as well. It's got Earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, um, uh, and other uh, extreme geological events. So it's well worth having a look at this, and now is the ideal time with everybody stuck in their houses. Um, school's not on, uh, you know. Um, so you can it's free to register for this course. Um, the address is given uh, there. So you know, do join it. It'll uh, help. Uh, You know, be could help your um, revision for uh, A levels. Um, the exams are not going to be running, so but it certainly will improve your knowledge. Um, so there's a little uh, video clip uh, on the next slide that I want to show you. So keep quiet for a minute too. Uh, just a, a trailer for this. Um,
shaped its surface and created conditions of life. We'll look at colossal events like the formation of the universe and the Big Bang and Snowball Earth when our planet was frozen over completely and trapped in an extreme ice state for millions of years. We will discuss how deep earth processes can lead to the largest volcanic eruptions in Earth and the role that they play in making our planet dynamic. We'll learn more about the largest, most extreme versions of flooding and tsunami, so called mega, mega tsunami, and the impact that they have had on our planet. Finally, we'll fast forward to the present day, look at the hazards and risks that these events present to society and the likelihood of humans experiencing these extreme catastrophic events in the future. Join our team of experts at Cardiff University and sign up now to begin your geological career. Okay, so do sign up for that. Um, so finally, part of the post-over visit day was a uh, I took from the residences uh, people. Uh, unfortunately, we can't have that now. But what I have got for you is a short presentation um, on the residences, and this video is available on our website uh, as well. And then I've got a couple of slides after this that sort of tells you a little bit more um, about um, the, the the residences and the timeline for making application to the residences and things like that. So I will uh, play this video now for you as well. in Cardiff was the desire to experience everything a city has to offer, but at the same time we wanted to experience a cosmopolitan environment, and that's exactly what Cardiff is. Even though it's a city, it still feels quite homely, whereas a lot of cities can seem intimidating at first. Cardiff feels very welcoming, everything you need is in quite a small space. It was always interesting people to meet, and I've made a lot of friends. When I was going to pick my residences, the main thing I was looking at is the distance to my lectures and to the town. Walking from hall to town was only about 20 minutes. It worked out that my lectures were very near the law bill, which is only 10 minutes to learn. Living at residences in Cardiff, the best thing was probably just so many nice parks, because it is only a casual walk and all the stress is relieved straight away. <laughs> When you're looking at different forms of residences, uh, some have en suites, some have shared bathrooms. There's a lot of information on the Cardiff University website. So I don't know if you like it, what suits you best. I chose to live in a university residence, which is a four years and a four compact of becoming a student, being responsible for myself. One of the things that did worry me was sharing the kitchen. It turned out to be great. So we didn't need a rotor and we just organised around each other. It's just a really nice communal way of living. The good thing about Clark is that all of the residences are very, very close to the town centre, to the university, and also there's a train station right over here. It's really useful, especially if you want to go home because you don't have to go very far. There's no need to be worried about accommodation. We have to stay because the residential staff are very helpful, so it's quite secure. Students who really met 
card it feels really really nice there's so much in there there's obviously like some really nice card that you have which is like a tarot everyone goes there one of these great orders and it's going to be a group of people in there and they go to all the time the facilities in the residences feel really good in Calabon all the rooms are en suite you've got your own bathroom and it's a shared kitchen and it worked out really well but there's also a sports centre and a gym and some 3G pitches I was never very sporty but it was great that they were literally on your doorstep the best thing about staying in student residences is that you get thrown together with people that you wouldn't necessarily have met otherwise and you know they become your friends for life Within the first two weeks, there were so many places that I went to, so many cute little cafes in town. It's really great. My advice to somebody coming to university and living or living away from home for the first time is not to worry because uh, everybody's in the same position and you meet some really great people. People that I ended up living with in the first year, I lived with the next three years of um, my university career, and I think they'll be friends for life. Okay, so as I said in the video, we guarantee accommodation for undergraduates with a firm offer. And uh, once you've accepted your offer to study here, once you've got this as firm choice, uh, you can apply. Um, and you can do this via um, the university online uh, system called SIMS, which you already know will have a password for, um, as it says there. <clears throat> so there's a timetable uh, for ready deadlines and things. I'll leave that on the, the screen and you can um, read it. But firm applicants must submit their online application by Monday, the 27th of July, um, 2020. And um, you can read the rest of the deadlines there. This is information taken from our on um, from our website. So that's it from me. Um, any questions, you feel free to send me an email. Um, or uh, if necessary, we can uh, we can talk on Skype um, if somebody would like to do that. No problem with that at all. Um, you'll be hearing from the university at some point. Right? I'm recording this on Friday morning, and as yet, there's no um, word from uh, what's going to happen about A level. Um, are you going to get get your A levels, basically? Um, but uh, the information we have at present is that the university, once information is, is released, once it's clear what we're going to do, you'll get an email from the university um, explaining what um, the procedures are going to be. Um, that's the best I can uh, tell you at the minute. Okay, I will sign off now and thank you for um, watching this.